In just a few seconds, we'll kick off this live stream. My name is Julia Chaval, I'm Head of Marketing at Oldwork, and you will find me in the chat during this event. Okay, let's run. But first, Oldwork. We are an employer branding and recruitment company who helps our partners create magnetic and data-driven employer branding to attract, recruit, and retain the right talent. To get in touch with us, connect with one of us here on LinkedIn or head up to our website, oddworld.se. Okay, friends, it's time. Let's go live with Employer Branding Talks by Oddworld. Friends and partners, employer branding experts and experienced professionals, welcome to Old Work and welcome to today's employer branding talk. My name is Puyan Karimi and together with my good friend and colleague and Old Work's head of employer branding, Charles Sinclair, we look forward to guiding you through 45 minutes of insights, inspiration and employer branding trends in today's talk. We are Old Work, a leading employer branding and recruitment agency in the Nordics, supporting, supporting both worldwide enterprise companies, ambitious scale-ups, and everything in between with their efforts to attract, recruit, and retain their talent on today's competitive talent market. That is uh, quite a right point. And for those of you familiar with Oddwork and our digital events, welcome back again. And for those of you joining in for the very first time, it's great to see you here. And we do know that we set the bar high for ourselves when inviting you all and lending 45 minutes of your valuable time. And we will do our very best to create as much actionable employer branding value as we possibly can for you in the following 45 minutes. And please, we already see that there's a lot of interaction in the chat. Do interact throughout the session here today. Let us know where you're from, ask questions, share your own thoughts, comments, and experiences. And we will do our very best to pick them up and address them throughout this live session here today. Indeed, we will. What wonderful engagement already from all over the world. Great to see. Let's get started. 2022 is coming to an end. And 326 days ago, we were all standing there on New Year's Eve, closing the 2021 chapter and looking into 2022 with delight. We were all hoping for a year when we could forget about the challenges of the recent years and hopefully get on with a new normal, a new mall, in, in good spirit new and most mall. importantly in, in good health. Well, it, it turns out 2022 had challenges of its own in, in store for, for all of us. The year started off with a new variant of the coronavirus, co uh, continued with the horrific events uh, with the war in, in Ukraine, Slava Ukraini, and has continued with an energy crisis, an inflation crisis, and an economic turmoil affecting all of us privately as societies, as, as countries, as professional, as, as companies, and obviously not least as employers. 2022 has been far from easy for many. And uh, along this challenging road, we, we still have our strategic goals as companies. We still have our targets that we aim to reach. The, the preconditions have in many senses changed, but the challenges, the ambitions, they remain. So how, how do we attract, recruit, and maybe most importantly today, retain talent in a, in a world like this? Was employer branding only the subject of, a, of an economic high role? And will it become less relevant in the future? Well, rather the opposite, it, it seems. In an ever-changing world, with the yesterday's truths being challenged continuously, the global job, job market remains surprisingly tight. Trends from the pandemic, such as the big quit and, and quiet quitting, have left both central banks and, and politicians astonished. Is it, it, it seems to, to still be as hard to, to find and attract top-tier talent. The, the competition, the, the war for talent is as fierce as ever. So what are the employer branding trends of 2022? What, what do we see from our partners, our industry, and, and not least our candidates? And maybe most importantly, will with, with new developments week by week in the job market, what does 2023 have in store for us? Welcome to this employer branding talk. We are live from the Old Work headquarters in Gothenburg, Sweden. Let's get going. Charlie. Let's do that. You are the head of employer branding at Oldwork. You work mainly with our enterprise clients such as AstraZeneca, the bank SCB, Electrolux, the Defense Group Saab, and many, many others. 
there is yeah. a new buzzword out there, uh, permacrisis, that actually describes quite well what we are in the middle of. What is a permacrisis? Yeah, so, I mean, for those of you who have been with us before, we, we learn uh, multiple new words here at Employer Branding Talks. It's been new more than new normal, as you mentioned there, Poy, and now it's uh, apparently permacrisis. And so permacrisis is, is a new term that perfectly embodies the, that dizzying sense of lurching from one unprecedented event to another that many of us are experiencing right now. And it is apparently used to describe a longer period of uncertainty and instability, uh, especially as a result of challenging events that lead to new challenging events, creating increased uncertainty. And uh, as you mentioned, this has been a, a very much been the, the, the world we have all been living in for the past couple of years. And as you described, 2022 has not made it uh, any easier. It has not. So, so no. we're discussing a couple of trends. Uh, we're taking a look at 10 trends today. We're going to dive deeper into some of them. And I and I wanted to start this off on a strategic level with the with the challenges that I mentioned of the, of the past years in mind and a very challenging year in, in new ways uh, currently. On a strategic level, does employer branding initiatives increase or decrease, and how has the dialogues that you are we're very much in the middle of changed? Yeah, so I mean that that's that sort of takes us into uh, the first uh, trend uh, here today that we'll be discussing. And I mean, if if you look at, at employer branding data, when when HR and employer branding managers are asked about this, you can look m much good data comes out from LinkedIn itself, um, and you can see these sorts of results that. You know, employer branding managers, of course, as they work with employer branding, but also HR managers and ma managers in general um, uh, recognize and, of course, understand employer branding's impact on being able to attract, recruit and retain. And um, that, that the employer branding investments are, are planned to increase. Obviously, that this differs greatly uh, between companies and, and the industry and especially in the times we're in right now. But what we see as we are now sort of like on a strategic kind of trend level is that employer branding is becoming much more strategic business function in more and more organization. Does the organizations. Does that mean every organization? No, not yet. But the trend uh, goes towards that. And when you think about this and when you look into this, it's not that surprising really because um, you know, employer branding uh, is 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 um, very much connected to an organization being able to reach its strategic goals. And why is that? Well, it's it's quite simple, right? Because all organizations have different sorts of strategic goals. It could be growth. It could be um, in how you develop your products or services. So whatever it might be, maybe you're moving into a new market or whatever it's happening in your company. And um, if those strategic goals, whatever they are, if they have an effect uh, on the people plan that you need certain people, certain skill sets, so certain seniority, juniority or majority um, to uh, be able to reach those strategic goals. That is where you have the employer brand because the employer brand, of course, um, governs what the employee experience is like internally so that people want to stay and develop and, and grow and also externally so that we can attract the right kind of talent. Uh, and we see this happening in more and more organizations that uh, employer branding, therefore, uh, is becoming the strategic business function. Then I have a follow-up question on that, because uh, talking about strategic goals, many strategic goals have changed throughout 2022. I mean, talking about uh, scale-up companies uh, that have been focusing for many years on, on growth, 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 now uh, tuning into profitability, would that have an implication then on, on the employer branding efforts as a result of the strategic goals changing? Yeah, no, of, of course it does, and and we and and we fully like acknowledge that 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 you know you have to uh, you have to adapt uh, the way you work with employer branding depending on what's happening in the company. But it doesn't really change the fact, like when you look at this model, that in the example that you take there, if say a tech company that has been you know heavily funded maybe by investment capital in the last couple of years now have to switch over to profitability uh, because the market conditions have changed, that simply means that the company's strategic goals might change in different ways but those new strategic goals will still have an impact on the people plan and especially in these times maybe that there's a greater focus on retaining uh, key uh, key competencies um, so uh, the employer brand becomes very important there as well um, although your, your goals um, change interesting and I would like to ask you as well does the employer branding efforts differ uh, the employer branding function does that differ between companies what what do you see yeah, I mean, so that kind of takes us to the like 
strategic trend number two there, and and that is that what's what's quite interesting uh, right now, um, and 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 we are you know lucky enough to, to see this as we work with so many different companies that uh, when you look at employer branding, it's very different how you know companies work with employer branding in their own organizations, uh, and companies tend to. Um, to be one of these three um, uh, sections that we that we have in the visual right here, most common uh, I would say uh, is that you know single person in the middle, you know the HR manager or employer uh, employer branding manager or employer branding specialist or people in culture whatever it is, who is expected to handle everything in connection to the employer brand, meaning you know both the HR work and, you know, the culture sort of work and um, um, external communications and everything, uh, which is, of course, very, very challenging because it would be like asking a, a marketing manager to be, um, you know, a communication strategist, a copywriter, an art director, a digital specialist, all in one which is of course incredibly challenging on the very left hand side you have those organizations where you, you you don't really work with your employer brand in a structured way you have those companies still and um might surprise some but even some larger organizations that we step into and engage with are in that phase uh, and then you of course have to establish understanding uh, in connection to that but when you look at sort of you know top employer brands you know employer brands that many of us cherish and love and are, are inspired by, they are the ones to the far right there. And typical for them uh, is that they work in a team structure. It doesn't necessarily have to be an employer branding team, um, specifically working with employer branding, but many times it could be that. But many times it's HR and marketing working together in a team uh, and that they are synced uh, in their ambitions. And that is typical for uh, employer brands that drive really, really great results. That's interesting. What's the effect then? I mean, if, if you compare companies with different organizations in terms of employer buying resources, what effects do you see? Yeah, I mean, so first of all, we can just like mention, just like we saw there in the in the statistics there, um, that that the trend uh, as more and more you know HR managers and employer branding managers are investing more into employer branding, both internally and externally. This is the trend that we sort of see that you know companies that maybe three years ago uh, you know had that single stakeholder expected to handle everything. Their, you know, marketing and HR now work closely, more closer together. Um, and I mean, the effect, of course, we just visualized it with, with this little, I don't know, I think it's a rabbit or something like that. The Tudelu employer branding rabbit uh, makes its entrance at employer branding talks here today. No, but quite simply, of course, like if you work struct in a structured way with your employer brand, you're able to drive increased results. So, uh, and that is as, especially what we see that this gap. Uh, is interesting to follow right now because some companies haven't even started to work in a structured way, whilst more and more companies are working in a highly structured way. And that is why we mentioned it as a trend here today. Interesting. And we actually got a got a question from from uh, our audience that I would like to to pick up here as well from uh, Sarah Larson Bernard. Should employer branding fall underneath uh, communication, HR, or marketing and brand? Very yeah, good it's, question. it's a great. Yeah, it's a very good question from Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. And and um, but, uh, my perspective, and I'm just speaking from experience in in, in the organizations that we collaborate with, um, is that this actually differs uh, between between companies. Um, at many times, it, it's and that is the challenge, isn't it? That it everyone understands that it sort of sits in between uh, all of them, or at least between communication and HR. Um, so I think that. Uh, you have to identify what works best uh, organizationally for for your company, but but uh, it it does need to be somewhere. Um, is is uh, is the encouragement there at least? Thank you. And uh, I wanted to I wanted to continue with so we started on a strategic level, uh, describing the different setup with the with with the teams, but the teams that are working structured, in a very structured way. How do they work? Yeah, exactly. And and I, I should just say, by the way, like connecting to that question, I mean, please, if you feel comfortable about writing what it's like in your company, like where it sits, where employee branding sits in your company, please share in the chat, because I think that could be like just highly valuable. That's why we're here to learn from each other. Uh, but no, so your question was in, in connection to how 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 these teams uh, sort of work. Well, successful first, teams, what is what is the yeah. key of success behind that structure? 
Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, first of all, is that they 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 have that sort of interconnection between HR and marketing. I would say, just like we we saw in the question there, but they also realize this, uh, and this is actually a report from from 2019. I think uh, our head of marketing, Julia, can just share this link in the event chat as well, so that you can download. It's fully free of charges for KPMG, and um, it's cool, just like the trend says, candidates as consumers, and the trend has just continued since this uh, report was published, um, and it's quite simply states, we just pulled out a quote uh, from the executive summary there, that candidates have begun to act as consumers shopping for jobs. And now, why is that? Because, you know, obviously candidates are, you know, candidates, maybe, I don't know, 5% of their time, you know, when they actually look for a new job, uh, some more than others, some less than others. Uh, but the rest of the time, say 95% of the time, they're, of course, consumers. So, doesn't it make perfect sense that they would act and behave just like consumers? And that is what they, they do. Um, and uh, to respond to your question there, Poyan, so what we see is that, you know, really like structure, really, really like employer branding teams and companies, uh, although it's a two-person team, a, a one-person team or a 10-person team, the driver souls kind of understand that employer branding, and now we're talking primarily externally, um, work in the same way as you would with consumer marketing, uh, with funnels. And uh, a model that we always use in, 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 in many of our collaborations is this one that you see right in front of you, the, the RIAN model, which quite simply means R is reach uh, or awareness, E is engage, uh, activate and nurture. So, you know, if you think about your own company, you have candidates that you wish to attract, recruit and retain especially uh, attract and recruit, if we're talking external employer branding communication, they are in different phases of this funnel, right? Um, some need to um, get communication from you just explaining that you are actually a really um, uh, interesting, fascinating employer where you could experience a great career. That would be in the reach awareness phase, you know, when even bigger consumer brands that are well known, it might be that many candidates do not, don't actually understand, well, what, what would it be like to actually work there? And it is uh, you have to you know you have to take candidates through that reach uh, and engage phase before you can uh, request them to apply for open positions with the company. Uh, it's very few that would you know apply for an open position with any company if they don't understand why uh, you would apply for that position with the company or understand what the company is all about, what the position is about, and the culture, etc. And what we see is that. Many companies that are, are starting out their employer branding efforts kind of jump the gun a little bit here and just move straight into the activate phase because it's in the activate phase where you have, you know, typical, you know, recruitment marketing campaigns and say social media that you publish those, but you've never, um, you never communicated towards the key candidate target groups about what it would mean to actually work in the company in question, why you don't get as great of a response. Uh, if you um, did that before uh, encouraging people to apply for a job with you. So uh, top teams kind of work in this way and work in a very KPI data-driven way. Uh, so when you launch activities, you can measure, for example, say that you are launching an employer branding campaign or a recruitment marketing campaign. You can, um, what our digital teams do is that they always look at so-called baseline KPIs. So say that you look at how many visitors do we have to our career site today? How many uh, how many applications do we have on average? Uh, now we launched this campaign. How did these baseline KPIs go up? How did you know time on site increase? How did number of applications increase? How uh, did uh, you know visitors or or, or job uh, subscription increase, etc.? And you work in that sort of uh, data driven way, just as you would towards consumers. That's a very that's a that's a very valid point. And we have there's a lot happening in the chat right now, and we got a lot of yes uh, comments on on sharing the, the the slides. We'll we'll get back to that as well. But in between, we we picked up some some questions that I want to ask you, Charlie, from from uh, Monica right here, and Monica Rodriguez. What profiles roles should make up an employer branding team? Yeah, no, very good question. So if we just look at um, at some really good examples from our side, um, it tends to be more, this This very much depends on sort of the, the, the size of the organization you're in, I would say. But um, you, you would need to have HR on board. That could be the HR manager or head of people and culture that ha has that HR perspective. Um, it, it, it can seem surprising, actually. But in many situations, when, when say we are brought in, uh, you know, it's companies that have amazing um, brand and comms and marketing teams, 
but they haven't specifically worked with employer branding before. They're experts in, in consumer uh, marketing and branding, but not employer branding. That is why HR obviously is so important to have there. Um, then I would say that it's, it, again, depending on company size, but you know, marketing manager or comms manager, and then, you know, roles that are, you know, uh, underneath, you know, the HR manager and marketing manager. So it could be, you know, a digital specialist or head of digital um, and so forth, copywriters and, and, and et cetera. Um, so it differs a little bit between uh, companies, but I would say, you know, just a, a, a cross section of, of what you can pull out from uh, HR and, and from um, uh, the marketing side. Cool. And I'm going to pick one one question, one more question up uh, for now. Basically, to, to summarize this question, how close does the actual does the brand building of the company need to work with the employer brand building of the company? Yeah, no, it's and it's that that is like a really fascinating question and comment there, uh, Deeped, because um, we, we, we're not actually bringing that up here today. But there is some uh, pretty cool research into this as well that. Uh, when you look at HR managers and, and marketing managers and how they respond to how the so-called consumer brand and employer brand will continue to correlate and work together in an even more synchronized way, um, that is expected to increase even more moving forward, which uh, is just like you say, that that will increase. Th th that is what we believe. Then also it differs, uh, you know, depending on the industry you're in. Say that you are a consultancy company where it's the actual employees being the consultants in the company that are sort of are the consumer brand as well. It's their expertise uh, that is the uh, product or service that your com uh, can, uh, sorry, uh, consumers, customers purchase from you. Then it becomes even more clear how employer branding and consumer brand can work uh, in alignment. So I think that's a very valid point. Thank you. And we have more questions. We'll, we'll come back to them because we have a couple of trends and we have 45 minutes together. Charlie, we've talked on a strategic level about uh, the hierarchy. We talked about the different team setup and also now uh, candidates much like uh, consumer behavior. Uh, what more do you see out there? Yeah, I mean, so, so um, something else that we really do see, and this was especially... Uh, talked about at uh, World Employer Branding Days, uh, which is one of the world's biggest international employer branding events. We very much encourage you to go there um, if, if you're interested in employer branding trends. It's it's in it was in Lisbon about a month ago, and Oddwork is a country partner from Sweden on World Employer Branding Day. And uh, what we saw there, uh, and, and this is supported in many reports as well, is how you know top employers, front of the line employers actively involve employees in the recruitment and employer branding process, uh, and especially video uh, as a big mega trend here. And this is connected to the, the very big trend of authenticity that has been very existing and growing for years, that candidates, again, behaving as consumers, very used to digesting and seeing different sorts of content, et cetera. Um, candidates expect authenticity from employees today, you know, in, in, in comparison to say, say, you know, stock video or stock photos that simply does not work and it doesn't convert uh, either, by the way. Um, so authenticity is very high on the uh, agenda here. And so if you look at this trend, um, if we look at the World of Works trends report from Top Employers Institute, uh, I think uh, Julia might be able to share that uh, link uh, in the chat there as well. So it's from this year. Um, you can find many interesting um, um, insights there. But one of them is this, that 87% of top employers actively involve their employees in attracting candidates uh, to the company and increased by 13% since 2020. Um, so, and, 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 you know, and, and then when you combine that with video, which is a structural megatrend in the world right now, um, we see how user-generated video is a very efficient and creative and cost-effective way to drive results here. Um, and we figured, Poyan, like we, we, we talked about this before the event, like, well, how can we showcase this in a good way? And we figured that, you know, there's a lot of talk about uh, TikTok uh, right now. Um, so, yeah, so we just figured that we could just share a couple of examples of how, like, you know, really big brands uh, are using TikTok uh, being used to generate the video, you know, where you your employees film themselves by, with their phone to drive uh, engagement. So let's just take a look at Walmart that has a big employee ambassador program where they curate content in in this uh, way. It's a new year. This year will be our best year. All those fire and year. Let us yeah, so I mean, you so, sort of get the point there. So just one example, but you know, if you look at other examples, it's it's pretty cool because 
Uh, take Washington Post, for example, one of the most, um, you know, uh, top journalistic platforms out there. Uh, they've been running employer branding on TikTok in this way. So let's let's take a look at that. Hey Dave. Hey Nicole. What do you do here again? Oh yeah, um, I make TikToks. Oh. Gotta go fast. What's the problem? Dog. Bang. Jump to the right and you shake that hand and you jump to the left and you shake that hand. Yeah, so I, I I think you get it there, and and uh, yeah, I so. do. But I just have to ask because I have to be that guy in the room now. You know, we have uh, different different companies from all over the world with us in this live event. I mean, this is quite edgy. This is quite bold content, activating employees via TikTok in this way. I mean, do you see do you see uh, this meaning TikTok? Is this really for everyone? Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, Martin and, and his team is obviously a wireless car using TikTok, so it's a great job there. But no, no, I mean, the, the question is is fully irrelevant. And, and no, we do not, uh, to be honest with you, because it, it's simply not. However, I think that you do have to understand that video um, is a megatrend. It's the structural megatrend that is here to stay. And that goes for both marketing and HR, because it drives such engagement from consumers and candidates. And you know, with, with other services, and you know this better than anyone, uh, such as like Life Inside, for example, which is another service, it, it's much easier to get started at almost no cost, like if you compare to TikTok at least. And I, I know that, I mean, we track uh, results from companies involving employees via employee video storytelling uh, via Life Inside right now. So, I mean, what, what do you see there from your, from your point of view? Well, yeah, so first I might explain that I, I spend 100% of my professional time uh, right now on our newly launched uh, employee video platform called Life Inside, uh, which is a response to many of the trends that we've been discussing and we are discussing here today. And the reason is pretty simple. From, from Orderworks side, we've seen the trend of authenticity and employee generated video grow rapidly on the candidate market over the last couple of years. Basically, basically candidates that want to get to know the actual company before applying for a, a job. Why we reached out to a couple of our uh, employee branding clients about 18 months ago, developing a video service for them that would support them very easily in being able to collect employee video testimonials. You see uh, Storytel in front of you exactly right here. Um, with this, with their, with their smartphone, um, asking employees to not do a TikTok dan dance necessarily, but to just answer a question, different sorts of que questions, relevant, interesting questions about the life inside the company, their, their job, their recruitment process, and, and publish them uh, straight to the company's job ad or career sites in, in just a couple of seconds, really. At present, we're live on, on about 60 different companies across multiple industries, and, and the results are, are really, really cool. Yeah, and I, I think that this is really cool because it's 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 kind of like amazing that we've come to that point in time when candidates expect this sort of authenticity uh, from employers now, and they researched uh, as as they are behaving like consumers, just like we said, um, and that companies can now involve employees in, in the recruitment and employee branding process in in this way. So, um, what kind of results do you see when when companies use uh, employee video on career sites and job ads in this way? Well, it, it drives results in, in many fascinating ways, you know, because people want to connect with other people and not just corporations. Just think about uh, job ads. Basically, job ads have looked this, exactly the same for uh, since the 17th Wait, century, the right? the beginning the, of the, time. Yeah. Yes, they are, they are text, 95% text, 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 text. Now, uh, a couple of bullet points, maybe two. But, but now with uh, a tool such as Life Inside in a matter of seconds, maybe 15, 20 seconds, you can, instead of forcing candidates to just read a text, create a brand new and, and modern candidate experience where candidates get to, to meet and engage with actual team members in the company that he or she is, is potentially going to, to, to work with. Uh, or maybe the recruiter responsible for the recruitment process, explaining the process step by step. What's going to happen when you push this button? How do we work? What steps ahead can you can you expect? And it's cool because we, we measure this very closely and we see uh, the, the time on site increase uh, by up to 90%. So the time spent on the, the job ad, for example, we see an in, in, increased conversion that is 
basically the number of relevant applications for the open position go up by 40 percent so it's really about leveraging employee amb ambassadorship and involving employees in attracting candidates to the company just like the trend uh, says yeah no exactly and I, and I know also that that we've seen sales and marketing teams and not just hr starting to use employee video in in, in this uh, way as well now yeah exactly that's that's what's interesting you know uh, this started as a people tech tool uh, for primarily career sites and job ads but we're starting to see how sales and marketing teams are getting hold of the, of the tool and they're more more used also to uh, take tools uh, that uh, are very very measurable and they're also using uh, starting to use the life inside to drive sa sales toward clients uh, on product related or service related parts of the website humanizing the sales experience toward their their clients we see real estate agents showing uh, showing objects on, on a video we see uh, lawyers presenting themselves on, on different so we, 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 it's really cool to see sales and marketing integrating with a hr tool from the beginning uh, as as well uh, so just like we we are talking about here employee video is a great way of driving increasing results uh, both for hr and marketing it is a combination of many of the trends that we we're talking about uh, today in terms of uh, authenticity and uh, consumer like behavior and and so forth yeah now it is and 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 uh, i think that's great and, and and i do believe that that uh, we do have a, an offer for for everyone uh, listening in here today uh, who would like to try out employee video in, in this way we do, of course. When when you uh, when you join an employer branding talk with old work, you should always get value in return. Uh, so we've opened up for a fully free trial for anyone who would like to try employee video on their website, career career site, or job ads. So you can join uh, our colleague uh, Julia will just share a link as well. But you can go into lifeinside.io, click get 14 days free trial, and our team will reach out. And I just want to uh, say this as well: this is not an big. This is a plug and plug and play. This is not your six month employer branding project. This is a, a tool in which you're alive in 15 minutes from pushing the free trial button for 14 days to actually having a video. It's 15 minutes. So it's plug and play within um, employer branding. Awesome, fantastic. So uh, now go, and I, I think uh, Julia can put the link in the, in the chat there uh, as well. We, t time flies, Charlie, more trends. It does. Uh, you more know, trends. we do these employer branding uh, talks and the employer branding summit. We've been doing this for, for the last two and a half years. And yep. a central tactic and a reoccurring topic for discussion has been the employer value proposition, the, the EVP. Yep. Uh, now, in these times, it comes to the test, no? I mean, great cultures come, uh, come together during tough times and weak cultures fall apart. So if we move on to the next trend, what is the role of the employer value proposition going into 2023? Yeah, so I mean, a clear trend here that we see as well is how companies that, you know, the EVP is, is sort of standardized nowadays. Most companies have their EVP in place. The EVPs are constantly being revised and updated uh, as the company grows and develops. Um, but what we're also seeing now is how proactive employer brands are, you know, leveraging the employer value proposition by creating so-called target value propositions that are targeted with offerings and communications towards specific candidate target groups. So. If you think about your own company, uh, it might be that you have, you know, your company-wide employer value proposition, but then you leverage that EVP uh, towards specific kind of the target groups. It could be IT, tech, or engineering and, and operations, uh, for example. Um, so, so we can just show you a couple of examples of this, um, how what it could look like. We just brought Spotify up here because it's a well-known brand and a very strong employer brand as well. So you can see, like on their career site, with the employer promise of joining the band. You know, this is a this is the the career site for for everyone for all kind of target groups, but they then they have leveraged their EVP into this you know engineering specific engineering site for example where you have offerings and communication podcasts um, a blog post specifically towards tech and IT. Um, so a, a really good example of what we're seeing there, how the EVP is developing uh, and branching out into TVPs. Uh, SCB um, uh, really fronted the line with their employer branding as well in, in many ways. Uh, you know, the EVP for the entire organization, but then they've developed this, uh, the, the TVP towards tech, uh, feet on the ground, head in the cloud, where you have specific communication offerings towards tech talent. And this is something that we see more and more of and that we believe we will continue to see 
uh, more and more of um, throughout uh, the upcoming years. And I mean, I mean, the, the employer value proposition has been in talks uh, for for years, uh, and and it's been a tactic. But I would like to ask about the the, the activation of it. Uh, how can it come into play in a very concrete way? Yeah. So so also the the the, the, the I'm I'm happy many said yes there to to getting the slides afterwards. Um, um, because the the point you know, is is that you're not going to sit like this on your computer right now and and see what we've written there. But we, we've just been trying to map out how uh, many uh, proactive and, and, and strong employer brands, they use and leverage the EVP throughout the entire candidate experience or even the employee life cycle. Um, so what we're just trying to showcase here is how the employer EVP is not just used as some sort of documentation that you use internally or something like that, but that you use your EVP as the platform that drives everything uh, in connection to the candidate experience. So if we look at this example right here, when you have your EVP in place, that you make sure that your career site and job ads that are many times the first point of contact for many candidates with a potential employer, that they are updated, that content is updated in alignment with that EVP, that your targeted social media campaigns are in alignment with the EVP, then going into you know event fairs or whatever it could be like here we always recommend that you map out the candidate journey into your company specifically because this differs a little bit right but that you use the evp as the platform um, for the entire uh, application process, the interview process, even you know, the LinkedIn emails from recruiters, the, the, the emails when you search candidates. Um, so this is something that was widely talked about at the World Employer Banning Day as well, how more and more organizations are using this in the same way as um, the marketing side is using the brand platform to leverage the entire uh, consumer brand. So it works in the same way for the employer brand there. Interesting. And again, we will we will send these uh, slides out to anyone interested. We will. Uh, we'll come back to that later as well. So just to summarize a bit, we still have seven minutes of those 45 valuable minutes that we have borrowed for everyone tuning in today. Uh, employer branding has continued to, to become more and more of a strategic business function, uh, also becoming more KPI guided. There is a gap between companies in EB resources. We were talked about candidate behaving like consumers and employees, uh, one of the most central resources, current employees for, for, for most efforts. Uh, adding to that employee value proposition and that it's hopefully in place uh, already uh, is the guiding compass steering through challenging times and into 2023. I know you travel a lot, you meet a lot of companies. Uh, you mentioned World Employer Branding Day and other forums here as well, meeting the most prominent employer branding professionals out there. Uh, was there any other topics out there buzzing, valuable enough to share today? Yeah, of course, and 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 you know, for, like we have forty five minutes here. We would love to be with all of you for 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 multiple hours. Of course, that's not possible. So, uh, these six trends that we we uh, focus on a little bit more in depth, uh, we felt are, are 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 extra valuable to highlight. But of course, there are many additional ones, and it would just feel weird not to mention these additional four. So. Um, uh, an additional trend analyzing the employee experience in real time, especially when you have a focus on retaining uh, employees, which is a key focus for many organizations right now. You know, if, if you conduct that, you know, historical, um, you know, employee survey once every six months or once a year even, we kind of just get a, a, an understanding of what's happening right now, but not tomorrow when things have changed. Uh, it's not a great strategy. Why obviously real-time pulse service is, is a big trend that is uh, sort of becoming a standardized uh, thing now. Um, stability, uh, we just figured that we would mention stability and also flexibility is the new black being a trend. So uh, this is a great thing, in fact, for, for you know, bigger companies that are you know, built to last and very stable uh, in uncertain times. That when you look at candidate research, stability is something highly sought after. Uh, it has grown um, a lot over the last couple of years as we've been in this perma crisis that we talked about. Flexibility is part of that as well, hybrid work. And when you look at, especially concerning enterprise companies, bigger companies, uh, DNI, and uh, diverse and inclusion focus, uh, it finds its way into more and more EVPs, career sites, uh, even job ads, where candidates feel that this is a very important issue uh, on a global level, why it finds uh, its, its place as a very uh, uh, um, existing trend uh, in employer branding as well. 
And finally, uh, reskilling of employees uh, when skill sets, sets which show uh, quickly more and more employers are um, realizing the value of reskilling existing employees instead of going externally. So that is also listed in many reports as a key, key question and priority for many HR managers uh, moving forward. So just a, a quick touch on, on those four, Poyan, uh, but valuable nonetheless to, to mention them, we feel. We need to do an employer branding week, I reckon, uh, just I talking so about too. this big great. stuff with people for a week, uh, but not yet. Uh, very good. Thank you very much, Charlie. We'll take them with us as well. We are coming to an end of these 45 minutes. But before saying goodbye, we also want to notify our Swedish attendees about this year's Magnet Employer Branding Awards, the Swedish Championship in Employer Branding. What's happening there, Charlie? Yeah, I mean, so just want to notify, sorry about turning to our Swedish attendees here. Uh, I hope this will go international soon. But um, so the Magnet Awards, uh, the Swedish Championships in Employer Branding, if your company has created an employer branding initiative or campaign in 2022 that you're really proud of, make sure to nominate it uh, to Magnet Awards, which is the Swedish Championship again in Employer Branding. You can, there are six categories. Uh, diversity and inclusion is one. People tech is one. Attraction is another one. Check it out uh, on magnetawards.se uh, where you can find more information uh, and the gala uh, the actual awards is in march 2023 and nominations are open until the middle of january do it charlie thank do you very it. much for do sharing <laughs> insights and yeah. thoughts to all of you to uh, all of you tuning in today thank you for joining old work and spending 45 minutes of your valuable time together with us we hope you found this worthwhile and that you can apply one of many of the trends mentioned here today in your own company please make sure to connect with us on, on linkedin instagram whichever channel you prefer yes. I, we don't have tiktok i don't have I, maybe charlie has tiktok you have to check <laughs> And uh, whatever channel you prefer, and we and if we can support you guys in in, a, in any way, we are right here. It is always our pleasure to meet you guys online and in person. So from Sweden, we say thank you for tuning in to our live stream and looking very much forward to see you soon again. Beautiful. Thank you very much, everyone.